All right. So let's get going. We want to welcome to the show Dr. Nicole Lynn Coyle, um, a spiritual entrepreneur, self love alchemist, and trauma transformer. Um, yeah, this is a long me. time in the making. Uh, we started to do this, uh, we were early in the stages, we were going to do it, and then uh, I think you weren't feeling well, and we pinch okay, it. I was... And then uh, now we got the, it's worth the wait now. <laughs> yeah. I was sick as a dog the last time. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. You're like, I can't do it. I'm like, oh, no worries. We'll figure it out. So that's what life does, right? Life throws uh, the force of average balls. at us. <laughs> Absolutely. Curveball force of average, brother. So, uh, so it's good to finally have you on. Um, Thank you for having me. This, uh, this I think, is a, is a perfect topic for what's going on in the world right now. We're talking about uh, the mental health of uh, a lot of people that... Post COVID and whatnot, uh, I think uh, from what I've seen, and I'm sure you're a professional in the world. From what you've seen, uh, the world's a mess right now, and uh, a lot of people are struggling. So absolutely, uh, I yeah. think uh, um, everyone's seen the bio on that, so I'm not going to read it to you. But basically, um, you uh, you help people, right? I mean, it's really, what it comes I, down to. I mean, we all help people, but uh, that's yeah. that's your job. <laughs> Um, the best I can, for sure. <laughs> yeah, you work. You have a health and wellness center that uh, you're in a transition mode right now. Um, yeah. And you have a online program that you're putting together. We'll talk about that. And uh, the home blessing box is really cool, so we'll highlight that. But um, let's get into um, just right off the bat. Um, what's this this whole depression thing that's going on in the world, and that I think a lot of us are struggling with. I mean, myself included. Um, yeah. And. Um, what we can do to uh, try and get past that and, and also realize that we're not alone in that and we should reach out for help and not, not be alone on the island, as I call it. Uh, Absolutely. Struggling. Yeah, you know, since, uh, since COVID started, um, there's 40% uh, of uh, U.S. adults have reported um, having some sort of uh, anxiety or depression episode. Um, and that's a 25% increase um, from pre-COVID. And then, like, so worldwide, the current statistic is that there's a 25% increase in cases of depression, um, bipolar um, episodes, and anxiety. So it's like the whole world, um, you know, um, has felt a sense of, like, overwhelm, loss, right, grief um, from losing certain things, jobs, people, uh, freedom, face-to-face um, uh, -face contact, uh, social contact and so there are a lot of um kind of remnants um prolonged remnants and persistent symptoms of like being cut off from people for so long and just having this like big huge fear of the unknown because nothing looks the same as it did pre-covid yeah. yeah. and so a lot of people are having um, a problem handling all of that and it does it's not like it's one thing at a time right it's just all of this stuff every single day and every day the information changes and it can cause overwhelm in a person um, and no stability, like not a firm foundation to stand on. So it can cause us to feel hopeless um, and get depressed. And so there's just been an increase um, since COVID started and it's a little bit out of hand right now. It's probably every person you've, you've spoken to has um, you know, experienced anxiety or depression at the time and at the moment, and they're currently going through it. So yeah, it's pretty bad right now. Yeah, yeah myself I, included, by the way. <laughs> yeah, no, I've, uh, I've been struggling. Like I said, it, uh, we were talking before we got on here about, uh, you know, I do my message every day. Uh, we're 315 it's days seven. in today. Yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah, we have 50 yeah. days left. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to keep doing a ride after the 365 days, but I think I want to keep doing the messages because it's, it's just nice to connect with people. A lot of people reach out to me and thank me for Absolutely. just touching on a topic that something that meant something to them. And it's just neat to connect and try and get back right. a little bit. Um, and there's some mornings. I mean, there's actually a lot of mornings when or even days when uh, I'm not feeling it. And I try and put on a happy face and I try and get my message out there. And uh it comes out, I know, because people have reached out to me and said, are you okay? Which I really appreciate. I think, just think it's really fun right. when someone, hey, you look a little off today. Are you okay? And no, I'm not. Yeah. I'm struggling today, you know? And right. I think that's important to realize that uh, even though myself, I'm going live and I'm trying to give you guys a positive message, you know, we're all, we're all a little broken and uh, we're all trying to keep it together. Yeah. So it's important not to, I think, feel like we're alone on this island, as I like to call it. Um, you know, we all think that we're the only one feeling like this. And when you realize that a lot right. of people are feeling like this and then 
put the high gas prices on top of that and inflation right. like crazy. I mean, everything we do is just more money. I mean, it's like, where's yep. the end, you know? And I know for me, it gets overwhelming. It's, you know, real estate's right. been busy for me lately, but with six kids to feed, it's just never enough. Right. Just no matter how much right. I make, it's just never enough. It's always another bill. It's always more money here and more money there. And it's it's just really health insurance is through the roof. And yeah, yeah. Like I said that we look at that, where's that light at the end of the tunnel? It's like, wow, it's right. really dim. <laughs> it's really dim. You know. Right, and I think I think that's the problem, right? Is that persistent um, uh, struggle, persistent yeah. um, overcoming, you know, another mountain to climb. Yeah. Like just when we think we're getting our footing, something else drops yeah. on us, and yeah. and we, you know, as humans, we're meant, we're built to take on a lot, but we have a breaking point. Everybody mm. has a breaking point, you know. So to ask somebody to overcome constantly, constantly, constantly it wears your nervous system down. And so the more your nervous system uh, gets tired and exhausted, uh, the less capability you have of finding strength, of, of finding like that kind of inner courage to keep going mm -hmm. or to like, you know, mm -hmm. overcome something. And when your nervous system is taxed, you physically start to get sick, you know, if it's taxed for a persistent amount of time. And um, then when you start to get sick, your adrenals go in fatigue, you have no motivation, you procrastinate, you know, it's a, it's like a domino effect if it's yeah. left, you know, just to go on for a long time. And I think most people, myself included, you know, I just got done saying today to somebody, I feel like I just keep getting piled on, you mm. know, like every time I think I get a foot on the ground and I lift myself halfway up, something else comes and puts gets put on top of your shoulders and it just like yep. it gets heavier and heavier until you set it down for a moment. And I, I think, you know, the best thing we can do right now is this, like talk about that we, we do struggle, you know, nobody's alone. And yep. even those of us who are, on, are in the business of mental health are struggling, you know, there's all therapists have therapists. And if they yeah. didn't have a therapist, I would question them, you know, like you can only deal with other people's stuff on top of your own stuff for so long. And, and it's taken its toll because it's been almost, you know, two and a half years of constant um, fear and unknown and mm -hmm. just, you know, we can only handle so much. So, yeah. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I'd say sometimes it just feels like, you know, I'm getting tired of swimming, you know, it's like we're swimming and swimming and swimming, like, sure. Nemo. you know, just keep swimming, just keep swimming. And at a certain keep point, swimming. it's like, you know, wow, I'm getting tired of swimming. Like, <laughs> when am I going to get to the island, you know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Where's the and palm trees and the pina coladas, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I listen, I, you know, we, I went to Mexico <laughs> this fe past February for my birthday and I was in the middle of a depressive episode and a really bad one. And, and, um, you know, I had just been dealing with a lot for so long and then, um, we had to close our, our center, uh, you know, very unexpectedly because of a lease issue with the landlord and it just sent me into a spiral and, you know, even in the most beautiful place on earth, you know, Tulum, Mexico, it's hard to find beauty every day when you feel that low, you know? So yeah. um, for me, I just tell everybody, you should feel your feelings, but, um, and allow them to move through you. Just don't get stuck in them, you know? So sometimes we have to set it all down and just be what we are at the moment, you know? If we keep pushing it under a rug or, keep trying to mask it like let's say with a smile then that's um us trying to put it to the side for a moment and there's a place for that but eventually right just keeping like the smile on your face even though inside you feel broken isn't always healthy and sometimes we should talk to somebody or write it out write it down mm. you know i say the yes. best way to get it out of you is to write it down um, that way it's not ruminating in your head. And I think that's the problem, right? It's like we want solutions. And so we're in our head constantly about like, what if, what if, what if, if I do this? If, and we're trying to play chess with ourselves about how to make it all work. And sometimes the best thing you could do is get out of your head. And writing is the easiest thing to do to get out of your head or breath work. You know, I always, that's my big thing. It's like breath work doesn't ask anything of you, but to be present for a few minutes. And so being present with something else takes us out of the stories we have in our head. So, yeah. Yeah, I like that. Uh, Stacy uh, Raschke's last event, we did that. We did writing, wrote, rev basically forgave ourselves, wrote everything down about stuff that we That's were carrying. Right. And, you know, burn it, throw it away, whatever. And then yep. the breath work, um, it, was, uh, yep. it was the first time I had done anything like that. And it really, 
it, it was moving. It was really uh, something that uh, I kind of brought into my schedule and now do a little bit here. Yeah. Actually, you start getting a little stressed out, you breathe a little bit. And it sounds so simple, right. but it really gets you, breaks that whatever, mush you got going on. And it's yep. uh, for everyone that's watching, if you don't know breath work, reach out to uh, Dr. Nicole here because um, it's it's so simple, but it's life changing. It really is. It's yeah, a, because we breathe automatically all day long, right? If, yep, if left yep. to our own devices, we would probably be dead because we'd stop, yep. we'd hold our breath when anything went wrong in life. And yep. But breathwork asks you to focus on the breath. And so it, you can't focus on two things at one time. So if you're focusing on the breath and breathing consciously, the mind quiets down because you're not, you're not giving it any energy, you know? So um, it's the quickest way to get out of a... Um, an emotional episode, I say, you know, just stop for a moment and, and even attach a word to your inhale and exhale, you know, so like inhale gratitude, exhale worry. And you, so when you inhale, you, you repeat that word. And when you exhale, you repeat the chosen word, because then it gives the mind something else to focus on, except our problems or our struggles. So it's very effective because it doesn't ask you to do any digging, right? You don't have yeah, to talk yeah. about your problems or your trauma, You're just breathing. So, so, yeah. so when I did it for the first time, uh, literally, I was crying. I was shaking. I mean, it was it was intense. It was intense. It was definitely um, yeah. you get obviously a little lightheaded from, you know, being over oxygenated, which I think we all short. Right. We don't breathe the way we should anyway. We all short breathe. We don't get the oxygen we Absolutely need. Absolutely not. And it obviously right. keeps us, I think, in our slumber a lot of times because we're not getting the full yep. oxygen we need. So it's just mm -hmm. something to think about and take a deep breath every now and then. And I also... Yeah. That's something I was I've called uh, the breathe and roll method. When you're getting excited, take a deep breath and let it roll off. You know, like don't carry it, it. You know, just release it That's and right. uh, take that yep. deep breath and push it out. And uh, it helps when you when you're conscious of that decision. And you know, when something's Absolutely. hitting at you, like don't get excited. Just all right, this is okay. Take a deep breath, yeah. let it roll off. Okay, and let's move forward before you react and you know knee jerk reaction. Right. That's it. Yeah, that's yeah. it right because when we're over emotional or we're overwhelmed we tend to be in reactive mode we're in fight or flight right yeah. so fight or flight is our survival mechanism and so we don't think we just do right yeah. our brain's telling us we're in danger somehow yeah. and so we do everything we can to be safe which sometimes aren't the best decisions to be yes. made from that space yes. so true. and so if Right. And so a breath just allows that fight or flight to turn off for a moment, um, not let it go into full reactive mode. So and, and, you know, when we're stressed out or we have anxiety, you know, it, it's the amygdala in your brain. It can be hijacked. It's called the amygdala hijack, you know, and like all of a sudden you're saying and doing things that you would never do or say because it's trying to save you, per se. You know, it thinks you're in danger. So, yeah. 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 Being conscious. Uh, it's something that I've really tried to be aware of myself. Friend, they said. In the past, some, especially I think overachievers that are always busy, we're always running, 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 yep. and we're on autopilot. We're going, 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 and we're not thinking. We're we're just moving right. and going through the motions and getting stuff done and knocking out tasks. And then when stuff comes at us, we're quick to bang and yell at someone and give them a hard time and not right. understand them and not listen to what they're saying. I had, I had one of my uh, message of the morning was: Do we listen to understand or we listen to respond? And mm -hmm. I think a lot of us listen to respond. You know, when someone tells Absolutely. you something's wrong, you're like, yeah, but, da, 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 and you right. have a whole reason why you're not listening to what they're saying. And unfortunately, right. I'm guilty of this with the, uh, with the ex, you know, when she came to me yeah. and wanted to tell me stuff, I'm busy and I'm just responding and I'm not listening to what she really wanted to say. And obviously it's detrimental right. to relationships when, you know, communication isn't the way it should be. So uh, if you right. can stop and just be aware of your surroundings and just take that deep breath and, shh, okay, calm, let's talk, let's right. react. Um, this is what I've been learning myself, and it's really made a difference in my life to uh, just be aware of, conscious of your decisions rather than, you know, on autopilot. And I right. said that, that breath work is cool. So yeah. what other uh, hacks do you have to have uh, when you're getting a little stressed <laughs> out with anxiety and depression? And Yeah, yeah so the easiest hack, too, is... Um you know, when you inhale, when you exhale, say the sound ha, like a long extended ha, ha, ha is a sound that activates um, the thymus gland and the thymus is your stress regulator. And ha is also a sound that the brain interprets as a sound of laughter, even, you know, ha, ha, ha. Okay. And so to say ha on an exhale is a release of overwhelm in the body and, and actually a release of emotion in the in the form of breath and sound and sometimes sound is a 
the way you say ha, the way it vibrates, it vibrates in your throat, um, activates your thymus gland, and then it um, activates the upper palate of your mouth, which activates your pineal and your pituitary glands. And that sound, that one simple sound, it gets so much stress out of your body. Huh. And then the brain, because of the sound, says, oh, they must be experiencing joy because ha, ha, ha. And so it actually releases cortisol and I mean excuse me it releases dopamine from the brain which reduces the amount of cortisol in the body from a stress response so that's an easy one just like inhale and just go ah. so yeah or that's hum cool. you can you can hum if you hum mm, it's a vibratory frequency that goes from the um, upper palate of your mouth to the pineal gland in your brain and the humming is actually um, a calming, um, mm. has a calming effect on the um, mental chatter that's going on at the moment. And so when you hum, the mental chatter will stop and the nervous system regulates itself. Wow. So that's an easy one too. That's awesome, that's awesome. Um, do you have a quick breath work exercise that we could do to show people that don't know what breath work is? That we can yes. we do something quick together that's and uh, so yeah, we'll show absolutely. everybody what breath work is because a lot of people that I tell about it are like, what are you talking about? What's breath work? Like, so give yeah. an idea of like just, a, I know there's long versions, short versions and whatnot of exercises. Uh, yeah. And there's a million different forms, right? So there's like Wim Hof breathing and conscious breathing and holotropic breathing. So um, I do what's called Thrive Breathing, but we um, combine other breath works that other practitioners know. But the easiest one to do, um, you know, Navy SEALs use this one that we're about to do, and it's called box breath. Um, and box breath is where you take um, a certain amount of inhales you hold the breath for the same amount of time that you inhale, then you exhale for the same amount and then hold the breath out. So you're inhaling, holding the breath in, exhaling and then holding the breath out. So we do it to counts of four if nobody, if somebody's a beginner. Um, and so it looks like this. It'll be four counts in consecutive inhales with no exhalation. So it looks like so four little inhales through your nose. And then you and then you hold the breath in for four. Then you exhale four times through the nose. And then you hold the breath out. So for four counts. Okay. So the whole thing would look like. And that's box breathing. So basically, you're, it's in four steps as a box, okay. right. and or square breath or box breath. And what it does is it regulates your nervous system, and it switches you from fight or flight into your parasympathetic nervous system, which is your rest and restore nervous system, which is the one you need before you go to sleep to be on. <laughs> nice. So, yeah. And how many times? Yeah. Like, how long would you do that for? Like, um, so if you do counts of four to do one round, like the four inhales, the hold, the four exhales, the hold, you would do four rounds and that would make a, a one minute, right? So four rounds, one minute, and then uh, you can do it up to three or five minutes, depending on how you feel. The holding out is the hardest for most people, holding your breath out, like after you exhale and don't take an inhale, you just hold the breath out, people struggle with because it can tap into your fear of death. Your brain thinks that, you know, oh my God, you're not breathing and you desperately want to take an inhale. But if you can control that, you have more control over your life if you can hold your breath out. So oh, that's cool. That's awesome. Yeah. 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 yeah I like it. No, it's definitely uh, a new thing that I found and it's, it's neat. It's, uh, you know, it's a, so your self-help therapy that you can do anywhere, anytime, and, and totally, uh, and yeah. it really changes your state. It really, like I said, it's for anyone that's watching that hasn't it, done it. It's uh, try that exercise and let us know what you think, because uh, yeah, that's definitely uh, pretty cool. So um, yeah, and you can do it without anybody knowing. You know, you can yeah. breathe really quietly in a store yeah. if you're having an anxiety attack or. Yeah, you're you're about to go on stage to speak. You know, it's a really good one to do that too. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I like it. I like it. That's cool. Um, so let's talk about energy awareness. 
Uh, yeah. I'm a fan <laughs> of energy. That's something new I've been finding. Uh, Doc Holy's on here uh, watching us, and he's a big energy Hi, guy, Doc too. B. I love Doc B. He's Hi, the Doc best. B. He's the best. <laughs> so we talk about that a lot about energy and uh, yeah. something I've discovered, you know, the battery chargers and the battery drainers and just certain Absolutely. people just, you just feel their positive energy. It just, you want to soak it up like the sunshine and then you get those certain yep. people that you get around and it's like a cold, dreary, you know, windy day and you're like, I want to get away from this. And, and you start right. to get aware of those people in your life and you know who you gravitate to and away from. And um, like I said, I know I just have conversations with some people and it's like you get a natural high from talking to them because it's just like, they're so yeah. bubbly, they're so fun. It's like, you know, and I need that because sometimes when you're depressed and anxiety, that little Absolutely. conversation will just snap you out of it. Another another hack. Yep. Find someone happy and talk Absolutely. to them when you're depressed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And you know, people with good energy aren't even necessarily always happy. They just exude a different yes. frequency, right? It's totally. all about vibrational frequency. So it's about what you resonate to, you know? I always say everybody has their own radio station. Mm -hmm. And um, when you find, when you're trying to find your tribe of people who uplift you, who feed you, who nurture you, it's trying to find the station that you're attuned to. To. not everybody is attuned to your station you know like yeah. you may be rock and roll and they may be country but it's just trying to fine tune that radio dial in you to see who you vibrate with because it's definitely a frequency thing you know there's sometimes you're around somebody and you feel exhausted after you leave yes. and they haven't done anything but have a normal conversation but their energy is on a different wavelength and it just can be like exhausting for yours you know so um, yeah, so it's just about finding the people who you resonate with and not trying to force it. Like, I think a lot of times in life, too, we, we force certain relationships because we're supposed to, you know, like energetically, like, let's say they're friends for a long time or family members, you know, but if you if you feel worse when you're around that friend, you know, then it's probably not a good idea to be hanging around with them a lot um, because you're always going to be taxed. Your nervous system will be taxed. You'll be energetically drained. You won't have anything to offer anybody else when you walk away and you will have to deal with the consequences of feeling low, you know, so, yeah. Yeah, it's, I think it's in our apex world. I think a lot of us are on that same uh, station. Like, so when we go to Texas, we all meet up. I mean, to me, that that's it. I come out of there high, like, and then you lose it, yeah. like, we come off that high of, right. of being with everybody. I was, we got uh, Gabe on here. We got Dr. Holly on here. We got Jerry Gherkin on here. All guys that Jerry. are just energy people. Like when I'm around them, they Absolutely. just like you know they, they light me up, and uh, I can't get enough of them. So I appreciate you guys that right. are watching. Um, yeah. It's uh, just like I said. I don't know. You just get this when you're in that room full of all of us on the same station for the most part. Like every person you talk to, you're just like you walk away like yes, like built up you know charged up and it's just Absolutely. so neat to uh i don't know so neat to be in that room and like i said i'm actually on a pretty long run now without uh going to texas and not getting cowboyed you up you and me both you know yeah, and it's you uh, and me both. i did uh stacy's event when tampa was i don't know was that almost two months ago now and that was that was a great event um and now stacy got another one coming up and an entrepreneur meet, entrepreneur meet up and then mdm which should be crazy yeah I don't yeah, know if I'm gonna make all of them. I, know, I got my ticket for MDM. The other ones are. It's getting to be a lot of traveling, but I yeah, kind of miss the energy. Right. I'm like, I got to get a quick hit before before MDM. <laughs> That's the thing, too, because you can ride it for a long time, right? Everything feels possible. You're kind of, like, all geared up. You have other people, like, giving you ideas, and you're bouncing yeah. ideas off of each other. And, and that frequency, you know, there's, there's a Bible verse, wherever two or more are gathered in my name, you know, there yeah. am I. And, and it's the same with energy and people. When there are two or more gathered for the same purpose and passion and potential, it's it's um, expanded energy, right? So it, yeah. it increases in in strength and it increases in viability, and so then it like lights up everyone. And then sometimes people go home all fired up, and their family doesn't know what the hell's happening with them. They don't think we joined the cult, the yeah. Family, <laughs> the family's not on the same wavelength yet, you know. So yeah, definitely, you got to find a tribe that like you can rely on and lean on and talk to without. Yeah you know, censoring yourself or editing yourself where people want to help you reach your potential because that's important in life. Otherwise, you know, we we never feel like um, we have a support system. So, yeah. Yeah, it's neat. Uh, we've got a couple of uh, groups that we put together that, you know, 
we push each other and whatnot and put out wins yeah. and, and give to each other too, which is, uh, which is something, you know, Chris Whitehead talks about all the time to go give and it's, it feels really good to give your energy and give your support and give your help to Absolutely. people out there. It's not just, you know, obviously people charge you about it, but when you get to give your energy to someone and they, and they take it and appreciate it, um, right. that also helps charge us up in a, in an indirect way. Um, yeah. it's neat to be able to help people and, and, you know, obviously there's some people that take, but the people that take it and appreciate it and build off it, it's, uh, it's cool yeah. to see someone uh, light up when, uh, when you're talking to them. So yeah, because you never know, you never know where anybody is and what the, what the word might be that would like help them out of whatever funk they're in today. You know, they might feel things are hopeless or like it's going to fail and it's not going to work. And just a message from you or like any offering of help is like, you know, it's like, oh, I'm not alone. It can be that one yeah. thing that they needed to hear today. You know, I so, love that. Uh, always be kind. <laughs> um, my buddy Benny, I don't know if he's watching Benny Montalbano. Um, he sends me all the yeah. time uh, a silly picture of himself making a silly face with the, you know, you could caption on it. And, you know, it's funny. Yeah. I've tried to do it myself now because it means so much to me. Like I could be in a funk and all of a sudden a silly picture shows up and it's you good. And I'm like, you know what? I wasn't, but now I am. He made me giggle yeah. and you know what you're thinking of me. And that means a lot. And so then I try and pay it forward and reach out to other people in my life that say, Hey, just whoever pops up in my feet up. Oh, hey, you good. And you know, sometimes yeah. you hit people and they're like, how did you know to reach out to me? And I'm like, I don't know. I just felt like I needed to ask you if you were okay. Like, no, I'm not good. But now that you reached out, I feel yeah. better. And it's, it's important, I think, to, to, again, be present and think outside of ourselves and think of, right. you know, the go-give, you know, the trying, the more we inspire each other, I say it all the time, fire starts fire. So the fire mm -hmm. in us, we need to light the fire in other people, and then that fire comes back to us again, and before you know it, we got a forest fire going of positivity, and, it's, Absolutely. Yeah, and it grows. Yeah. It's just, you know, it's it's fun to watch how it, how it works. And in the yeah. same way as, as, a, as a negative, toxic person will take out a whole room. You know, you have Absolutely. someone at work that's saying this job sucks, this job sucks. Before you know it, the whole company is saying this job sucks. But if someone like in the room is saying this is the best job ever, everyone's saying, you're right, this is the best job ever. And it's that easy to yeah. to spread that fire, good and bad. Right, right, right. Uh, it's, yeah, uh, right. You know, it's something Actually, to be aware of, too. Yeah, I had a spiritual teacher once that said, you know, um, I just the whole thought just went out of my head. <laughs> Isn't that funny? <laughs> it was like it just popped in and then it went right back out like. Maybe you don't need to say that right now. It'll come back, I'm sure. It'll come back. That's it. <laughs> but it's not. It's not there now. It literally left. <laughs> <laughs> so what else we got? Um, addiction. Addiction's big. I know myself. Yeah. I uh, I bounce from uh, overeating. Uh, it's an addiction for me. Uh, I drink too much at times, and um, whatever else, I I kind of like an on or off switch, and just about everything I do, it's either all in or off. Um, and I know a lot of. I think that might be just part of the type of people that we are. I know a lot of my friends have struggled with alcohol that are in that same high output, high level. Yeah. Uh, Sam Smith uh, doesn't drink anymore because he had issues. Benny, same thing. He's you know over a year sober, and um, because we kind of go all in with everything. <laughs> we're either all in <laughs> or all out, you know. And it's, That's it. Yeah. yeah. It's <laughs> like we don't have that on. You know, we have an on off switch. We don't have a dimmer switch, and. Uh, I know yeah. I said myself, uh, when I'm on a diet, I go all in on a diet and I lose weight. And then as soon as I'm off the diet, I'm all out. And it's like, right. if I could just figure out how to keep yeah. a happy medium, you know? <laughs> yeah. Well, some people, right, are predisposed to just doing life that way, you know? Yeah. So like all or nothing, you know? And then some people are, you know, able to have one drink and never touch it again. You know, yeah. you never know. It's, I think it's a genetic. I think it's chemical. I think there's something else going on in the brain. I think there's a bunch of factors that factor into that, but most of the time, high achievers or people who are always on the go, always trying to build something else and, you know, rise, 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 rise. I also think things like drugs and alcohol and, and food, right, are ways to control your environment, right, mm. ways to control yourself and, and uh, you know, drugs and alcohol are a way to numb. So if you're in an overwhelming state of emotion, you know, take a few drinks at the end of the night and it's all mellowed out or, you know, you're kind of like, you know, I don't have to think about it right now. So I think it's used um, in high achievers, you know, um, not in the best way, like used as a way to just like shut the brain down for a little bit, you know. So they're just we just have to find different ways to be able to do that, yeah. you know, like self-care practices or should be replaced. Um, Breathing. You know, <laughs> 
breathing should be the replacement. You know, there's also like, I just told somebody the other day, I think it was my family, I think it was yesterday to be quite honest, and I said, you know, when you feel overwhelmed, you know, sometimes you just want to scream. But I said, you know, you can lie down on the floor, put your legs and arms up and just kick, like, and sh like kick the whole body. It's like, there needs to be a somatic release somehow, right? Like of overwhelm. Because it gets stuck in the body. And if it's never let go of, it just compounds internally. And then it creates physical issues and more mental health issues. So there needs to be some release. And I just think for a long time, you know, substance abuse is one of the things that numbs that like feeling of emotional overwhelm. And yeah, so breath work, kicking, <laughs> yeah, definitely. kicking up in the air. Music, dancing is like the best way to get back into your body and to get back into a positive space because you'll put on your favorite song. You know, songs are attached to memories and and um, music actually raises a vibration if you find it happy. And so that's also another way. Yeah. yeah so you go for a drive on a sunny day with the radio up and uh, it's therapy. They, you know? win <laughs> and windows down, brother. Windows down, you that's live it. in Long Island, you can go to the beach, right? You're near Jessica Dennehy, so you guys can yes. go to the beach yes. with your feet in the sand. Yeah, only for like four over. months a year, and the rest of it's freezing cold. But uh, yeah. we're, we're, we're coming out of. We're all praying like it's middle of April now. Can it get warm out already? It's like enough already. But I'm uh, in upstate New York right now with my families, and it snowed yesterday it snowed still or up there. the day before. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. We have a camper up there. We'll be opening that up uh, May first, and hopefully uh, it'll be warm by then. But yeah. uh, it's uh, upstate New York. New York's a beautiful place. To you know, upstate is completely different than Long Island. We got the beaches very much. here, and yeah, you very know, much. Norfolk, Long Island, kind of looks like upstate for those that have never seen it. You know, a lot of farms and stuff like that. But upstate, you got the mountains, yeah. and it's a uh, yeah. it's a beautiful spot. Uh, it's a lot more than New York City. Everyone thinks New York is just a city, and that's there's a right. Lot, there's a lot of yeah. beauty out here. There's I know when I, when I post my pictures for my rides, people are like. That's New York. And I got, they have grass yeah. there. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, they have grass here. <laughs> and trees. <laughs> yeah. Lakes and oceans. Yeah. And, yeah. It's, uh, yeah. it's really a beautiful place to live um, outside of the traffic and the taxes and the politics and all the other nonsense that goes on. Yeah. Right. But um, yeah. Yeah. Talk about PTSD, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> totally. Shot from Believe New York. me, man. <laughs> yeah, I, I lived and worked down there for a while. So, yeah, it's just constant noise, constant stimulation. You know, that's the other thing. Constant stimulation is like the worst thing for your nervous system ever. You need times of quiet and solitude and, and nature. You know, nature's so healing for us. Like oh, um, grass, trees, uh, the ocean, a lake, you know feet on the ground not yeah, in grounding, shoes right? not on yeah. concrete yeah. very much so yeah. yeah yeah earthing it's called you know put your feet in the grass find any patch of grass and put your feet in the grass it's definitely healing for your nervous system and it's a complete regulatory um you know um tool just to put your feet in the grass you don't have to do anything special just walk around, walk around barefoot, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. When you think yeah. about it, right, that's how we were meant to be, right? We weren't meant to wear shoes. I mean, like, you know, a lot of stuff that we right. do, you know, we were meant to get sunshine on our body, right? And, that's you know, right. So we all yep. cover it up and, and you, know, you soak up the sunshine. It makes you feel good. You walk on the, on the ground with no shoes right. on. Right. It's a natural right. way, right? Even how we eat, right? We eat all this processed foods. Absolutely. You know, all the right. stuff we're doing to ourselves isn't natural. If we get back into that right. natural state, right. it kind of helps. It's and right. I think that's why, like, the, the mental health issues were increased during COVID, right? It's like, don't go outside. Like, you're not breathing oxygen. You're covering your face. You're getting a lack of vitamin D from natural sunlight. You're ordering takeaway, right? Like, yeah. because you're locked in the house. And and uh, all of that is, like, detrimental to your mental, your emotional, and your physical health and so you know your physical health will just deteriorate if your mental health isn't okay it's the first thing like the, that's when everybody tends to pay attention right is when their physical health is compromised somehow then they'll think like what might this be and it's generally from an emotional or a mental reason that's left like that's gone left unchecked you know or unregulated and so and then their physical body is like, hey, pay attention to me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. help. <laughs> yeah, so natural, always. Well, we were talking about energy. So the earth has its own energy, energetic vibration, right? A frequency that the earth has. We are all energy. That's what we're made up of, right? So feet of, like, bare feet have an energetic, like, Ener like all of the acupressure points in the bottom of your feet um, all lead to different organs in your body. And the earth 
emits a vibrational frequency and that goes through those acupressure points and works on organs in the body so it's very simple you know if you were a person that couldn't get to grass you can buy what's called a grounding mat simple Hmm. yeah you can plug it in and it like has copper wire and it's a frequency thing you put your feet on it once a day so oh, I've never heard of that as well. yeah it's just a grounding mat <laughs> oh, that's yep. cool that's cool i say you know, energy <laughs> like uh like my love language tends to be touch so like i just love like i love hugging people i love to like i just come give me a <laughs> hug like you know give me a big bear hug i love it you know it's like and it's that energy transfer like you give someone a big hug Very and it much. just feels good you know it's uh and uh, I think a lot of people are afraid these days, to, especially with COVID, to touch each other and shake hands and give each Absolutely. other a hug. Absolutely. You know, it's uh, you know, it's not like give, shaking someone's hand and pulling them in for a hug, and it's like you know, right? It feels good. Right. It's an energy transfer. You're kind of filling each other up, you know, and uh, it's more than right. just a and hug. There's cut, something behind it, yeah. Uh, and if you cut that off, right, and then you go for prolonged periods without physical touch from any human being like there are parts of you that will wither away. Like, right, if babies don't get hugged and picked up when they're small, they can actually die from lack of physical touch because they need to feel the vibration of care, of compassion, of love. We're the same thing, right? We are tribal creatures by nature. We were never meant to live in isolatory environments. Um, we are meant to live amongst other people um, and not in our own separate apartment in a building that houses 500 people in their own separate apartment. But like being in community with people is healing and nurturing for us. And so covid has just done a number on yeah mental health and and emotional health and you know that feeling like what if you were really like you say like a touchy feely person and that's your love language and all of a sudden you're supposed to be afraid to touch anybody yeah. you know for fear of getting sick and germs and it's created a whole host of like myriad of issues that we never had to deal with and so yeah it's increased everything in the world and not in a good way so <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, yeah. As therapists, we've been like extremely busy and overwhelmed. You know, we don't like there's sometimes there isn't any, enough time in the day to deal with the calls that come in, you know. So, um, yeah. So if we can just be a support system to each other somehow, like you say, Huge, send yeah. messages of positivity yeah. and check in with people. You know, we always tell people like, I'm here if you need me. Sometimes if you're in a situation that's like, you know, overwhelming and, and you feel like you can't go on and hopeless, the last thing you'll do is reach out because your brain will tell you you might be bothering somebody, right? That's what happens in mental overwhelm. And so we shouldn't wait till people reach out if they need help. We should check in on people we know might be struggling, you know, that's the best way to do it. Right. Not wait right. for them to come to us. So, yeah. Yeah, you know, we back to being present in, in our world i mean and not being on autopilot like you know right. someone's struggling you 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 get a feeling Absolutely. by the tone of their voice if it's on facebook the stuff they're posting if they start posting dark stuff right. hey you okay yep. like you know don't take it for granted like reach out and say right. hey you okay if they go live and right. you know listen i go live and i look off please reach out to me because you know what i'm probably there's a reason Same. why i'm off that day you know and it's like yep. you know it's and it feels it means a lot to me when someone says hey you okay like you know, and it's really just yeah. a simple way for us to give to each other, um, you know, to just, hey, are you okay? Like, you know, and you may say I'm fine, right. but the fact that someone reached out to ask if you're okay means a lot That's to you. That's it. You know, That's if you reach to yeah. someone, they say they're it's, fine. Don't, they may not be fine, but the fact that you reached out, you know, means yeah. a lot to them, that you cared. And, they, and if yeah. some, yeah, for me, if somebody says fine too, they're not fine, but <laughs> yeah. like that word is not okay with yeah. me. Yeah. We're back. Technical difficulties, <laughs> crappy internet or something, I don't know. So, where were we? Where were we? We were talking about... Uh, we were, I think we were just talking about, like, uh, you know, reaching out to people instead of waiting for them to reach out to us if they needed help. Yeah, so, I love my saying, uh, put your head on a pillow every night knowing you made the world a better place, and uh, I really believe in that um, as far as it's... Uh, there's a lot going on in the world, and uh, if each one of us touched one person, how much better right. would the world be? Um, Absolutely. You know, it's that simple. Like, you know, we got to get out of our shells. And, and uh, my friend Dave that was on uh, a couple episodes ago, he has a saying, in a world where hate makes headlines, goodness needs to speak up. And, Absolutely. You know, you watch the news, and all you see is bad, 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 and it makes you all depressed. And I stopped watching the right. news because I don't want to watch that. I don't want to fill my head garbage Absolutely. in, garbage out, you know, so... 
Yeah. If we can uh, inspire each other to share the wins, share the good stuff, share the happy stuff, you know, share all that good stuff on social media and yeah. social media with good stuff and support our friends. Fire starts right. fire and the world will become a better place. And it's that simple, but you know, everyone's got to, everyone's got to contribute. <laughs> Absolutely. And also like if you're the person, you know, I remembered what I wanted to say earlier about my spiritual teacher. <laughs> and like, um, if he always said like, if you're the person going through the hard time or you're depressed or struggling, suffering, the quickest way to get out of suffering, to get out of struggle is to go help somebody else, right? To be of service yes. in the world is the quickest way energetically to feel better, um, you know, because you're giving without, um, you know, the conditional response of reciprocity and, you know, just to give to give, not because you're getting anything in the end, but um, it actually helps you um, without knowing it sometimes, you know, just to be of service. And, and I think that's our job in the world anyway. You know, there was a, a, a one of my most favorite quotes is we're all here just to walk each other home. I you like know, that. we are not here to be solo creatures on a journey by ourselves. And, and sometimes we get lost and the only way we can find our way out of it is with help. And, um, but I also think like our society has taught us that asking for help is a weakness some, somehow. I'm not really sure how that came about, but asking for help is the biggest sign of strength ever. Um, you know, totally, it yeah. takes a huge, huge amount of courage to say, I need help. I can't do this on my own anymore. And if you're not lucky enough to have a group like Apex, you know, like a support system and accountability system, um, a group of people who will celebrate the smallest win possible, you know what I mean? The smallest wins. It doesn't have to be yeah. anything huge and exponential. It's like, you know, they celebrate everything about each other. We do. And, and, and everybody's genuinely happy for each other. Um, if you don't have that, you know, life can seem pretty dark sometimes. So, you know, advice would be to try and find a group of people that are like minded, that have similar interests and and try and be part of that, because it really will feed you energetically to be the best person that you can be. You know, it, we can't do it on our own, especially nowadays. There's no there's no way I try really hard. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm hyper independent, you know, and I. But I had to, uh, you know, a few months ago, I had to say, I cannot do this by myself. I am as low as I could get. And if I don't get some help, I don't know if I can get out of it, you know? So sometimes you're down, you need a hand to reach down and help pull you out, you know? So completely, completely. Yeah. We're, we're quick to yeah. get, uh, you know, uh, something hurts and we're quick to go get it fixed on our physically body, but our brain right. hurts and we're not, we're not quick to go get our brain fixed, you know? It's, That's it. You know, yeah. It's, uh, it's a problem. I mean, it, you know, I've uh, gotten a counselor in the last two years of stuff going on in my life. And, um, you know, a lot of times it's just really just be able to just talk to someone about it and say you're not alone and keep going and you're okay, okay. and you'll be fine. Just keep going. Just keep swimming. Yeah. You know? And it's, yeah. um, you know, it's good to have someone to talk to. And I think it's also good to, you know, we talk about a lot in, in the Apex, to get vulnerable. Like, we all hold this Absolutely. in and we don't talk yeah. about our struggles. We don't talk about our separations from our spouses. We don't talk about our illnesses. We don't talk about all the struggles we have, you know, or, or, you know, losing your center over, over at least that's real world stuff that happens and it, yeah. it's life and it, you're not alone. And it's like, you know, so it's being able to talk about that stuff and share that stuff. It helps get it off our chest because you know, Absolutely. we're able to share that. And then when people are receptive to it, it helps you grow even more and then it helps other people when you hear this go hey wait a minute someone else is dealing right. with that you know i hear right. some of the stories out there i'm like wow like you know yeah i'm not alone in this struggle you know it's right. um you know yeah. we all have the same struggle we're all in different stages of this struggle they just have different wrapping that's yeah, it completely. you know it's the completely. same thing different wrapping and and we really don't know what anybody else is going through and you know, there's a stigma about mental health stuff too. Like there's always been a stigma about getting, you know, counseling or therapy help or psychiatrist or psychologist. And, and so that has to be broken too, right? There is no shame in asking for help that way. And like you said, it's just another person to talk to that's unbiased, that's non-judgmental, yeah. right? That can just listen to listen, like you said, and yeah. not listen to respond and and that might have some practical tools that you are unaware of to help you navigate it you know if we aren't taught how to navigate depression anxiety you know um, trauma-based issues then 
how are we going to get out of it or or regulate ourselves if we don't have the tools to regulate ourselves so the only way you can get the tools is to go to somebody who's trained to do that you know yeah. how, whatever it is breathwork counseling you know biofeedback uh, it doesn't matter what it is whatever works for you there's no right or wrong answer in that it's you have to try different things out to see what works for you you know so yeah Oh, I almost think it should be called coaching in a way. It may have a little better stigma, right? Because it Absolutely. is. Counseling is coaching, yeah. right? When, when you hire right. a coach, a business coach, a life coach, all that, it. it's a counselor. But it's right. just a you know term different. And I think oh, I hired a coach sounds better than oh I need the therapy because my you know I'm right. all messed up in my head. But right. that person is that person that's going to say good job, or they're going to call you on your bullshit. Like hey, listen, you're being stubborn. You're being an idiot. Stop with your nonsense. You know, snap out of it and go do what you got to do. And sometimes I got to hear that myself. Like, you know what? You're right. I, I'm making a mountain yep. out of a molehill. Like, let's just go. And you need right. that kind of smack in the head a little bit. Like, hey, wake up. <laughs> you know? And, yeah. and, it's, and, so, and yeah. sometimes very particular questions have to be asked. And we aren't able to ask ourselves those questions because yeah. we're being very biased at the moment. Yeah. Right? Like, yeah. we only see ourselves through the filter of our life. We see ourselves through the filter of our past all of the events that have happened to us, any trauma that's happened to us that we see through that filter. And so that's why I call myself a trauma transformer, a self-love alchemist, because you maybe not like the term therapist, right? But if you're ha if you're struggling with mental or emotional wellness, there's definitely a self-love issue there, right? Because you've judged yourself probably. And if you've had some trauma, we just need to transform it. I don't need to fix it. Just need to change the energy about it. And so, yeah, I just, don't I that's I don't use the word therapist a lot so yeah I like that, I like that. you talk about trauma the, our trained responses to people I know I'm guilty of this I spoke about this in one of my messages um we're triggered by certain things of the past so if someone did something yeah. to us in the past right so someone may be coming at you in possibly a loving way because of something they did in the past you carried against them and you automatically have your triggered response wound up ready yeah. to pop and they're coming Absolutely. at you trying to be nice and you answer them short and nasty because something they did five years ago a year ago a month ago right and how we need to learn to you know forgive and forget and release and you know because yeah you know someone made, made a mistake and did something to us and then we carry that up forever and yeah it's, uh, and we ca and we carry it because there was a an emotional response in the original incident that created a pathway from the body to the brain and that pathway is now imprinted. Mm -hmm. And so any time, it could be the same person that the event was with or a stranger. If the tone of the voice sounds the same, mm -hmm. if the pitch sounds the same, if one word that was in that traumatic event is spoken by somebody else, the brain goes, oh my God, the last time I felt like this, heard that, right? Is this was my reaction and so you need to be safe so I'm gonna give you the same reaction and it, does, it takes moments to do it's done very unconsciously right it's not conscious it's it's like kind of imprinted in your subconscious and your brain just gives you that response automatically so the only way to get out of those triggered responses is to rewire the brain right like to do work around like like to be very present and go, oh crap, I just responded this way. Yeah. Why did I respond that way? What did I think was happening? What was actually happening, right? Like what did I hear? What did they say? There has to be like this inner dialogue with yourself about, and if you can't, you have to like talk to somebody about like, I always react this way when this happens. Okay, what happened initially to make you respond this way? Let's unwind it somehow because it can be unwound so you never react again. You know, so it can be healed. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's a big spouse one for a lot of people. Uh, you mm -hmm. know, if your spouse is always nagging you, and every time they come to you, they're used to them nagging you, you're just expecting them to nag you, and you're expecting that's then right. your automatic triggered response is go away type thing, right. and, uh, you know, leave me alone type thing, and they may be coming to give you a hug, and meanwhile, you think they're coming to, you know. Right. I know that right. sometimes you get that feeling, you know, certain people call you on the phone, you just see that number, you're like, you got you almost <laughs> tighten up. You're like, oh, what do they want yeah. now? You know, it's uh, right. and it's uh, yeah. that tra triggered response, that trained response that we have. That and it's funny. It's funny. All this stuff out there, I've become very aware of. Just again by yeah. taking taking a minute and obviously listening to uh, you know people like you and obviously all the 
knowledge that you bring out and uh you know in our community there's a lot of people that talk about stuff like this absolutely and it's great to get it out of the table but it's the, bringing it into the conscious from the subconscious i think is the whole just being present i mean it's like such a just a simple concept that just we just got to wake up out of our slumber and be present in right. our lives you know That's think it. before yeah. we act you know you know and let, don't operate on automatic you yeah, know yeah we get like, so stuck on autopilot well, because we're habitual creatures, right? So we do things, we always will do things that are the path of least resistance, always. That is what our brain will always choose. So even if the, the like reactive response, that may be the, the, the path of least resistance because that stops the interaction the quickest, right? So, so even that, even though we know it's not good, that's what the brain will do because it doesn't want to have that interaction. And so it's that being in habitual response all the time. That's where limiting beliefs come in. That's where mindsets get stuck, right? Mm -hmm. It's like we're living in habit, like a habit all the time. And so we need to create new neural pathways in the brain to our somatic response in life. And that's, it's easier to do than people think it is. And, you know, for me, it's breath work. I can rewire your brain in a, you know, a week <laughs> if you did the work, you know? Yeah. So, but there's a, there's a million different ways to do that, to rewire the way you respond to something, to be triggered. Yeah. You said the key yeah. word there, doing the work. No one wants that's to do it. the work. You got to do the work. Gotta and that's the, the problem, right? Our society wants to pop pills and stuff yes. to get instant gratification and instant wellness. And that isn't how it works. You know, sometimes medication is necessary and sometimes it just masks the symptoms of the of the root cause of whatever is happening. Mm. And in, in order to get to the root cause and create permanent healing in our life, we need to do the work. And it is work. You know, like breath work for me is a daily thing. I have to do it. I have depression. I mean, I, I have depression since I was a kid. And, and because I choose not to take medication, I had to replace that with something, right? If you take a pill every day, somebody takes a pill for depression, I do breath work every day. It's my pill. Mm. Without it, I can go for just a few days before I feel myself be completely off, like balance and unregulated, you know? So for me, it has to be in my daily routine because it's like taking vitamins, you know, so. I like it, I like it, yeah, because I, th I think we're way over-medicated. Um, I got diagnosed with ADHD and they were like, oh, try this pill, try that pill. And I just didn't like the way it made yeah. me feel. <sighs> yeah, maybe it helped me focus yeah. a little bit, but I just, it wasn't me. And I'm like, I don't, like, right. I got to figure something else out because I just can't, I just don't want to be on medicine all the time, you know, it's like, and yeah. it's, um, again, I just, it wasn't me, like, I just, you know, so. Yeah. I'll give you a tool for ADHD. Yeah, what do you got? I need them all. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, like, when you feel yourself in that state where, like, you can't focus, can't concentrate, and you're all over the map, like, there's just too much energy around. Pinball, yeah. You, yeah. <laughs> you take your thumb and you just do this from index to middle to ring to pinky, index, middle, ring, pinky, index. You just do this. It stimulates the brain, the acupressure point for your brains and the tips of your fingers. And you're stimulating the brain and you're giving it something to concentrate on. And you can actually do a sound with it, like do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do, or any sound that you want to repeat with each uh, hmm. finger or no sound. But it's a, a way to um, create focus and concentration. Yeah, I, I, I get myself on hyper focus when I need to do stuff like. So I'll put the TV on. I'll have the radio going, I'll have all the stuff going on, and then it drowns me out and I can focus. Like, it's, it's crazy. If uh, I overstimulate myself, I can hyper-focus. Right, and right. So that's like, your tool, so that's cool. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. It was like, Every for me to read a book, I need, like, the TV on. Like, it was like, <laughs> I need quiet time to read a book. No, 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 I need noise, because it makes me block yeah. the noise out and focus on the book. Uh, I figured out when I was doing 75 Hard that if I walked on a treadmill with the radio on and read the book, I was able to read. But normally in a quiet room, I can't read because right? I read the book, I read a page and I'm like, what did I just read? And I read it again and I, what did I just read? And yeah. I read the page three times. I'm like, you know what, forget this, you know? But on a yeah. treadmill doing my 10 pages a day, I'd walk as fast as I could, you know, just before I run so I could still read. And I was reading and had the radio on the background. I'm like, wow, I'm actually reading and comprehending and not reading the same page six yeah. times. It was cool, so it was like, wow, life hack. So that's your method, right? Yeah. And like I write, when I sit and write, something has to be on. 
radio, TV, something has to be on when I write. Otherwise, I'm in my head too much if it's too yeah. quiet, and there's just so much exactly. running around, and I can't quite focus it or get it like to sound the way I wanted to. But if there's something on in the background, I'm the same. Yeah. Yep. I, I did that with, with the kids in the house. You know, I got six kids and four to fourteen, and it's yeah. madness here all wow. the time. You know, it's loud wow. all the time. Oh my god! So I just literally shut it off, like you know, then to the point where you know someone will come up and talk to me, and I don't even realize they're there because I'm so shut off because I'm yeah. focused on whatever I'm working on or whatever. And you know, someone will walk up and be like, "I told you that," and I'm like, "Did you talk to me? Didn't I didn't even hear, hear you. you. Didn't hear you. Like yeah. I was looking right at you. I'm like." Unless you made eye contact and grabbed my attention, I didn't hear you. You shut yeah, off. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm in hyper focus. Like back, it yeah. sounds like background noise to somebody who's in that. In yeah, that it's, state, you know, it's you peanuts. Know, yeah, wah, 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 wah. You know, it's all I hear yeah, in the yeah. background. You know, it's like I'm focused on this. The noise is crazy. And if you need my attention, you got to make eye contact and make sure that I'm responding because if I'm yeah. in hyper focus, I'm, I'm not there right now. <laughs> yeah. So. Something has to break your attention. Yeah. yeah. Your attention to whatever you're doing. Yeah, that focus. Yeah. yeah. Hyper focus. Yeah. So that's uh, yeah, it's funny. It's my whole life I've been like that. Like in school, uh, I was never able to take notes because I'd start, you know, after the slide projectors, and I'd be taking notes, and then I'd be looking out the window, and then I miss a slide, and I'd be like, ah, screw it, like you know. So like, luckily, yeah. I was good at test taking, and I was I retained a lot, you know, visually, and mm -hmm. uh, I was able to get through engineering school and all this stuff without taking notes because I just couldn't do it. I couldn't focus enough to take notes. I never understood why it was like that. And then I found out about ADHD, you know, later sure. in life and stuff. I was like, wait a minute, that's me. That's why, I, that's yeah. what I the problems I have. That's like real, like, oh wow, okay. This makes a lot it's more sense now. Me. Like I'm not crazy, I am crazy, but it's, there's a reason I'm crazy. <laughs> yeah, but you're not crazy. Your brain just <laughs> operates differently, you know? Yeah. Like our all of our brains operate differently. And that's why school's so difficult, right? Like you're asking like, however many kids are in a classroom to learn the same exact way and we do not learn the same way as everyone else everyone learns in an individual way so test taking is hard for some you know comprehension and recitation is hard for others and I think that there eventually need to be like either homeschooling is the answer or schools that are individualized according to how somebody mm -hmm. learns you know so some kids can retain everything when there's music to it right like a song to it and yeah. and i think that should be highlighted i don't think that it's like one size fits all for anything in life but you know we're, we're constantly pushed to fit into some sort of box <laughs> and yeah. to to do it like everybody else you know so yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. i think yeah i think that's you know it's like you know Back in the day when they wouldn't let kids write left handed, everyone had the right right handed. That's like, it. In Catholic right? school, you had the devil in you if you wrote with your left right? hand. Right? So like, you think about how crazy that it was. And that's the school system these days. I mean, it's like right. you know, certain kids may need to walk around and learn. Some kids may need to listen to music while they learn. And it's like, you know. That's it. You know, it's something yeah. for me that's like, I always have music on because, again, I think that's my tool to the music kind of is one of my distractions that helps me hyper focus. Like, yeah. You know, I if if it's quiet, my brain runs, 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 runs. So if the music's on, that kind of soothing and kind of calms my brain down, so I can function. Absolutely. And yeah. Like, Why do you always have the radio on? And it's like cause I just need it on, and like I need music right. going. That's I don't know. That keeps my brain from running in after the squirrels. Sure. You know? <laughs> that's it. Yeah, absolutely. And I think too, like when kids go to school, kids are often diagnosed with ADD or ADHD, but they're actually just kids with growing bodies and brains that haven't fully developed yet. And so they're all over the place. That's a natural um, yeah. state for a child. And I think like what needs to be implemented in school too is like having what I call brain breaks, like every hour, get up, do something, mm. an exercise, a breath or something, right? To like help them get the energy out of their body naturally instead of saying, sit there, be quiet. You know, that's very hard for us. That's hard for me to sit there and be quiet yeah. for hours, you know? Yeah. And I think just everything needs to be overhauled to take into consideration somebody's mental and emotional state how their brain works how they learn how they retain you know how they understand things and that's just like anything in life you know and i think we all have to find the things that work for us and and know that it's okay to not fit in somehow you know yeah, yeah. we have to yeah. dance to our own drum as they say right <laughs> absolutely yeah. yeah we all have our own rhythm man <laughs> yeah yeah that's so true that's uh you know we homeschool the kids here and they each have different learning styles and you know, one wants to sit at the desk, one wants to sit on the couch, one, you know, but whatever right. works for them and you know, whatever, you know, they retain. And it's, uh, it's interesting. You think I got six kids that they'd all, 
you know, have the same genes, they'd all be the same, and they're so different. You know, just yeah. the way they learn, the way they talk, the way they act, what they want to do for fun. It's so if you, if I can see Crazy. that in 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 my own kids that are the same right. genes that you think would be the same, um, just in the population of the school kids out there, that uh, there's so much that needs to be accounted for. I think our school systems are we're underserving our kids. Absolutely. You know, and they take away stuff and, like, you know, shop and all this other stuff, the hands-on learning stuff. Right. They, they get rid right. of all that stuff, you know. It's, mm -hmm. it's Even uh, art and music, yeah. you know, in school, they take away all of the things that, um, you know, stimulate that other side of the brain, that creative yeah. side, that side that finds solutions, you know. And um, if you take all of that away, you're just in the intellectual part of the brain all the time and not all people operate from that side of the brain you know artists operate from the opposite side and so life needs to be seen through different lenses you know there's not one for everything and and um and i think there needs to be space for every every one of them you know in the yeah, world yeah. and i mean like i you know we're in apex and most people are really early morning people but i have to tell you i'm a night owl and i do my best work in the middle of the night like at one or two in the morning yeah, you know and yeah, then i get a ton done and I get a ton done and then like I sleep yeah. <laughs> so, like I'm just up that, that's, you know, that's me 100% yeah. like like yeah I 11 o'clock I'll sit down so I do AutoCAD drawings I design uh, HVAC systems and ductwork systems there's a family business I also sell real estate but um, so I sit at a computer and do AutoCAD it's tough for me to sit down and focus on a computer to AutoCAD. Like literally it's just sure. like from, cause my mind and then especially the internet's there and I want to go check something and check Facebook and let's, let's check a cup scroll a little bit right. more. And you know, before you know it, it's 11 o'clock at night and I'm like, wow, I got a drawing due in the morning. So from 11 till four in the morning, I'll do yeah. a whole floor, boom, knock it out, right. crank, boom, 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 boom. With the TV on in the background, with the radio going, lights on, all Same. this other stuff. And then mm -hmm. before you know it, boom, I did, probably a week's worth of work in five hours because that's I right. get the hyper focus and just go. It's that's uh, me at night. Same yeah. thing. So, Same exact thing. And yeah. Everyone's like, Oh, I'm up at four o'clock in the morning. Again, yeah, no, I'll stay up to four o'clock in the morning. I'm not up. That's four me. In the yeah. I'm just going to bed maybe at four o'clock yeah. in the morning, but I got a whole day's yeah. work done. <laughs> I, 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 you know, some people get up early and do their work. I do it at the end of the day. Right. Yeah. And Same. I get like my Same. second wind too. Like, so I'll get tired, like, you know, around like now and then once i hit that second wind i'm i'm be up most of the night you know i, I actually yeah. find i have to go to sleep when i'm tired because if i don't boom i'm on to the you'll be up i'm up yeah you'll be up once i once i hit yeah. that once i'm starting to crash and i don't go to sleep it's like bam i'm i'm good now for another four hours you know yeah yeah i just went through that like when i get depressed i get insomnia so i'm up all the time and I sleep for like one or two hours a night. And like, it was like that for like almost three months. And I was oh, like, wow. oh my God, like I'm just up all the time. And like, wow. normally when you're depressed, you know, you're just like, Ugh. and I am energetically, but I can't sleep. And so it's like, I just, you know, write a lot. <laughs> I write a lot. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Yes, yeah. just write it out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, all right. Well, now that we are uh, in overtime with our delay and our second, second break there, um, where yeah. can everyone find you? If everyone's having uh, any issues or whatever that uh, maybe they want to reach out to you, I know uh, no judgment. I always say reach out, no judgment, None. just just None spill your beans. And uh, uh, how can they find you? How can everyone find you? Yeah, on Facebook, I'm Nicole Lynn Coyle, C-O-Y-L-E. On Instagram, I'm Dr. Nicole Coyle. And um, I also have a website, which is www.naam. Um, y o g a a z dot com, and uh, there's like a bunch of resources on there. There's videos that people can watch for breath work and and other resources, and you can reach out to me um, on Facebook Messenger, and uh, there's a phone number on the website, and I'm all, I'm available. You know, I take pretty much calls all the time, especially if I'm up at night. If you get some random text message for me at two in the morning, it's because I just answered you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, awesome. So yeah, I'm on social media and I have a website. We have a YouTube channel too. I have a YouTube channel, which is called NAM, N-A-A-M, Yoga Arizona. And that's a bunch of breath work. There's a ton of videos on there. Um, but I do also do individual one-on-one -on -one work. I do things for corporations. I just did something for Lori Rains. Uh, um, all her her sales team last week oh, did some cool. breath work for them. Yeah, so yeah. I like it. I like it. Cool stuff. Cool stuff. That's awesome. So uh, yeah, we'll post that stuff up there. And uh, oh, we didn't talk about you. One last thing. You're uh, 
your home blessings box. That's your new uh, subscription thing you're doing, right? Oh yeah, we're yeah. doing a, a subscription box that's uh, you know full of holistic tools and techniques, and there'll be breathwork videos in them and and crystals. It's all the woo woo stuff, and uh, and uh, we're doing a specific box uh, for people who buy new homes or move, and it's called the home blessing box and. And there's tools in there to kind of clean the energy of your house and and set it for your family and cool. uh, to set intention and stuff. And it's a whole box full of tools uh, to help you clean the energy and and kind of infuse it with positivity and love. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. I'll to take advantage of that from my real estate world here. Yeah, it's a yeah. nice gift to leave when somebody uh, buys a house from you. <laughs> That's neat. Good stuff. I like it. I like it. All right. <laughs> awesome. So. Um, Thank you for coming on. This was a great conversation. Yeah, my pleasure. Thank the Force you of so Average much. tried to get us, but it didn't. So we're back. <laughs> it never wins. Brian. Never wins. Never we keep wins. going. We keep going. <laughs> and uh, all right, good stuff. So um, I appreciate you. I appreciate you coming on. And uh, if anyone Thank needs you. anything, by all means, uh, you know, reach out and uh, and get totally. help. Get help. I mean, you're not alone in this world. I keep saying it. You know, it's uh, the world can be tough, and we're not alone. So. Don't try and do it alone. Get help, and you know, if you get help to you break your leg. You get help, but if you break your brain, that uh, right. you don't get help. So That's get it. help. And it's we're not stronger a bad thing. together. Yeah, we're, we're stronger, stronger together. together. <laughs> All right, sounds good. Yeah. All right, everyone, All right, have brother. a great night, and uh, we'll see you uh, next Monday. All right, let's uh, yeah. shut this down here.